uh, you never know what the fuck's going to happen. You never know what they're going to throw a goddamn flag for. Well, I, I think that the defenders just, you know, if the quarterback slides or dives before they get to him, they just know I, there's nothing, there's no reason to do anything. Right. But I, I'm glad that the refs do say, okay, you dove, you don't get to get back up and run, you gave yourself up. That's right, because you know what? If he did get back up and run and they didn't blow the whistle and the safety ran over and clubbed him a little bit and, oh, just a little touch of his fucking sweatband would have, would have hit the ear hole of the quarterback, oh, that's 15 yards, tack it on. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, but 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 the injuries are being prevented, and that's all that matters. This hey, you know about the Packers, Aaron Rodgers. You know he's been estranged from his whole family for a while now. His uh, his brother Jordan was on Jordan uh, Rodgers. Yeah, he was on the Bachelorette, that TV show. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> the Bachelorette. I know the show. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Here's we'll put it on the list of shows that John would never bother to watch and has not. No, I I I didn't watch it either. Um, All right. But he apparently stated this on the show, saying, uh, yeah, we don't, our, my family doesn't have any contact with Aaron. He dates Olivia Munn. Aaron Rodgers does. Right. And, right. you know, that, w- that was what, that's what it was. I remember the story. I just didn't know if you and I had ever talked about it. I know Packer fans were blaming her for distracting him. Oh, for God's sakes. Well, that, know, that's, that's what the report was, that, is that she was the reason for the riff in the family because that family doesn't like Olivia Munn. <laughs> Not that Olivia Munn there. No, no. Aaron Rodgers uh, seems to like Olivia Munn better than his family. And, well, hey, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, I tell you what, love is blind. John, maybe he can see just fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get that. <laughs> what does he? What does she do to his family? Well, I don't know. We never heard. Other than other than they didn't like her. I don't know if it was for. I think it was. It, I might have heard it was like for religious reasons. Religious reasons. Maybe she's not religious and they are. Or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But he started dating her in May of 2014. Anyway, now according to Bleacher Report, he has not spoken to his family since December of 2014. So what, just seven months after they started dating? Oh my God, she's Episcopalian! Aaron, you dump her immediately! Well, the Christmas presents that his parents sent him and Olivia that year, right? apparently they sent presents to both of them. Uh, they were returned right after the first of the year, and he also well. will not give his immediate family members his cell number. Uh, he was supposed to, oh, this is uh, this one. I don't understand this. He was supposed to be a groomsman in the wedding of his longtime friend, but he texted him and said he couldn't make it the day before the wedding. Oh, what a dick. She's like, you told me we could go shopping. That is just wrong. The day before Olivia the Munn wedding. Olivia Munn has grabbed him by the nuts. <sighs> <laughs> You're not going to that wedding. You told me we were going to go shopping. I know she doesn't talk like that, but why not? So, he, you know, he used to call his grandfather uh, before every game he played. Right. And then his grandfather passed away. He didn't go to the okay. funeral. He didn't even go to the funeral. Oh, I, I'm sorry. You told me we were going to go to the bed and breakfast this weekend, Aaron. And I'm serious. If you don't, if you don't come with me, I will never see this perfect ass again. Well, here's the worst part, John. He cut off his family's free tickets. <laughs> oh shit! Where, well, aren't they from California, though? I don't know, but now, well, I guess his father. If went, they were from his father went to his games all the time, but now he's got to buy his own tickets. <laughs> his father. <laughs> He got his father out. Oh, my God. No more tickets. He should, he should really have some fun with it and leave some tickets for, like, Olivia Munn's second cousin. <laughs> he probably does. <laughs> probably, probably leaves tickets for anybody Olivia Munn tells him to leave tickets for. Right. Or have it just, have it just say, uh, the man coming, his name is Frank Rogers, and these tickets are for whoever is next behind him in line. And so I just I am curious now, what has Olivia Munn done to his family? There's got to be something. I don't know, but that's the story. All right, we need people to get in on this. We need people to give us suggestions as to what it is. Hey, did you watch any of the uh, Monday night game down there in uh, Azteca Stadium in Mexico City? Yeah, um, I did, actually. I, I noticed that the I like the the laser guy, the guy with the laser beam yeah. that was flashing it in fucking Osweiler's eyes. Did you see that? <laughs> yes. That was fucked up. Um, there's there's barbed wire all around the different tiers of the stadium. There's a matter of fact, the lighting standards on the top of the stadium from outside look like gigantic hunks of barbed wire. It almost looks like a prison camp in there. Uh, people have uncontro- They should have used that laser and tried to get it off of Trent Dilfer's head at halftime. That would have been fucking classic. 
You know what Raiders fans call Mexico City, right? What? Slightly less dangerous Oakland. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I can get that. I can get that. I do know that the Texans were under absolute rule. You go to your hotel. You do not come out. You get on the team bus. You go to the stadium. You get back on the team bus. You go to the hotel. We leave. Nobody was allowed to leave. Nobody, you can't even walk outside. They, they, they thought they were going to have to play the game with a uh, decapitated head of a drug lord. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when it came time for a field goal, they had to call for the kicking head of another drug lord. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, why not? I was listening in the broadcast, and John Gruden's talking about going outside and getting an enchilada or whatever it was out on the street, and I'm thinking, dude, you'll never be seen again. And I will put it to you this way. Remember the last time they did a game down there, the buff, the 49ers and the Cardinals? I made a cartoon about Al McGuire and Joe Theismann getting kidnapped. Right. Yeah, it was great. Way, way ahead of the curve there. Knew about that. All right, we have got to get to break. So we'll be back and talk about the Browns. Oh, they're trying. Bang Radio. An unexpected event on Thanksgiving actually helped create the league's most famous cliche. The year was 1962. Vince Lombardi's Packers, who went on to become world champions, lost their only game of the season. The Detroit Lions sacked quarterback Bart Starr 11 times. It was dubbed the Thanksgiving Day Massacre. And afterward, Commissioner Pete Rozelle explained the result by simply saying, any team can win on any given Sunday. VO Tech. VO Tech. For 10 years, VO Tech has been a leader in website development and network solutions. Whether your business has an established website or are preparing to create something new, VO Tech can handle every facet of your project. VO Tech offers full website and portal design and creation services, including domain registration, site maintenance, dynamic programming, database administration, video streaming, and more. VO Tech also offers full e commerce and e marketing development and management, as well as complete web hosting services. You can trust your web project to the professionals at VO Tech. VO Tech. Hey Browns, Mike Polk, season ticket holder. Well, thank God we built you. What a blessing for the community. You are wasting valuable space on our majestic shoreline, and what do we get out of it from you? Ten miserable games a year, including two preseason games that I have to pay for, and one shitty Kenny Chesney concert. Do you understand that it is actually statistically harder for a team to be this consistently bad than it is for them to occasionally accidentally be good? The probability is staggering. Did you happen to see that game today? It's like they're playing a different sport than you are. And here's what you have to understand. We don't even expect you to be good. We just want you to be watchable. Do you have any idea how low our expectations are? We don't expect you to win the Super Bowl. We just want you to look better than a Division Three high school team. And listen, I know that there are way more important things in life than football, but you are supposed to be our pleasant distraction from those things. But all we do is pay you money to put us in a bad mood every week. You are a factory of sadness! I'll see you Sunday. <laughs> Yo, what's up? This is Jerry Christ from Revenge Sevenfold, and you're listening to John and Tom on the Bang Radio Hour. I'm not insane, I'm not insane. <laughs> I'm not insane, I'm not, not insane. Come back to me, it's almost easy. Come back again, it's almost easy. Then in the gun, protector to his right is Le'Veon Bell. Here's the shotgun run. snap. He gets the run. He's into the end zone for a Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. Steelers show blitz, and they bring the extra guy. Look out. He's in the end zone, being chased, oh, and he's oh, hit. And the ball's out. out, and the Steelers, I think, have fallen on it. Pittsburgh says, officials say, touchdown. touchdown. Pittsburgh zeroes on the scoreboard, and that's the end of the game. Final score, Pittsburgh prevails 24-9 over the Cleveland Browns, who dropped to 0-11. The guys are, are trying uh, as hard as they can. <laughs> Bless their hearts. They deserve a cookie. Take them to Shakey's or something. Get the kids some pizza. Only five to go. Only five to go, John. 
They do. I think they can make it, except for this weekend. They have to play the Giants. Let's go Browns. Let's go Browns. Yeah, Let's no. go Browns. This is not the I, week I assume, the Giants was that the who's bright That was the Browns broadcast we heard, right? Or was that the Steelers no, broadcast? No, that was the Steelers. Okay, the, the thing on either side, it doesn't matter. But when the Browns fumble and the Steelers jump on it, the, mm-hmm. the announcer actually tries his best to sound surprised. <laughs> oh, look, <laughs> the Browns have coughed it up. Oh, look, another Browns quarterback down hurt on the field. <laughs> I think if I was one of the goddamn color people, I'd have to keep saying it. Every time they did something, oh, look, an interception, but they're just trying so hard. Did you see the receiver? He tried really hard on that play. <laughs> You know, a uh, funny thing about the Steelers, um, you know, Sammy Coates, the wide, wide receiver Sammy Coates, he had that breakout game. I picked him up. I actually actually started in fantasy football. He was like 180 yards, two touchdowns, whatever it was. And then uh, he broke two of his fingers. The next, the next week he broke two of his fingers. And so ever since then, he can't catch a pass. I mean, he'd only get target one time. And he, he, he got targeted five times one game, didn't catch a single one of them. You know, then he'll catch yeah. one catch for 12 yards and, and it, it's just, it's pitiful. But then Mike Tomlin said Monday, he said, Sammy Coates is limited as a pass catcher by his two broken fingers. So John, my question to Mike Tomlin is then why the fuck is he on the field? My question would be, what did Marcus Wheaton do? To can't, he can't get on the field in front of a receiver with two broken fingers. Oh, he's been hurt too. Well, they basically gave up on him. They benched his ass. He's, I mean, he's been, he's had owies, but I just think he's a pussy. They're not going to let him back on the field. It's Eli Rogers' job now, number two. I mean, Coates is number three, but he can't catch a pass. You know, his fingers are broken. You look at Jerry Rice's fingers, they're all mangled up. Lots of these receivers, when you see them after football, their fingers are all mangled up. Man. And what was the receiver's name? Oh, Dwayne Bow. Yeah. Dwayne Bow, they said that by the when Andy Reid got a hold of Dwayne Bow after the first preseason, he said Bo can't catch because his fingers, the tendons between his fingers and the webbing between his fingers have been torn to shreds and he can't grip anything. The dude can't even hold a pencil. Wow. So yeah, man, that shit takes a toll on you. But uh, it doesn't make any difference. They should they should pull the old Bruce Arians move when they lose. Head for the hospital. <laughs> oh my arm, it's broken. Is that right <laughs> there, he is. It's Bruce Arians. Every time they lose, oh, I, I got a heart infarction. Well, here's our here's our buddy, Coach Hugh Jackson. Obviously, these are not good times and haven't been for us. And uh, I think we got to get better. <laughs> I take responsibility for that. We got to make more plays, and uh, oh. we got to do a better job of finding a way to score. This part of the season, there's some things that I thought maybe we start getting better at, and it looks like we're still not there yet. So um, we still got a ways to go, and I know that, and I can see it. And, but again, I'm not going to let these guys get down. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> He can see it, Tom. He can see it. They're gonna one of these days. They're gonna bring it out. And show everybody. Wow. You know, we're just trying to find ways to score. People tell me that if we take the football and put it over that line, they're gonna give us six points, and we're bound to find out. We're just trying to figure out the best way to get it in there. We had a good suggestion this week to put it in a car and drive it onto the field, but I don't think they're gonna allow us for that because they don't open the garage doors. Oh uh, but, my you know, gosh! Got to tell you, Tom, we're trying really hard. They we're just, are. we're just, we got to get better. I'm looking at the tape. I'm watching the score. I'm looking at my team fumble games away, <sighs> and I realize we got to get better. I see that we've got this giant goose egg on the win column, and so we've, we've, we've got to get better. And I think we can get better as long as we get better. <laughs> <laughs> We just got to keep saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I believe you win through belief. Right. That's, <laughs> That's probably what he does. He sits down in front of the team. All right, everybody, gather around. We're going to read the little engine that could. Come on. It's been planned exactly like I want it. Right. Everybody sit cross-legged on the floor. There once was a little engine with a small motor. I won't go in your tank. You got a tank and you're in the tank. I will not join you. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, we can see it. We can see it. I got beat. Our staff got beat. Our players got beat. Offense, defense, special teams got beat. <laughs> <laughs> the parking lot attendant got beat. Poor guy. <laughs> he was just minding his own business. 
<laughs> well, we told him he's got to get better. You're attending the parking lot. Can't get beat out there. But we're not going to let him get down, Tom. We're not going to let him get down. We're going to go in there, by golly, and we're going to turn those frowns upside down.